Immunization and vaccines are back in the news again. I want to get some straight answers, so I'm going straight to the top. I'm going to talk to the Associate Chief Medical Officer of Health for the province of Ontario, Dr. Robin Williams. How can vaccines be good if they contain mercury, which uh, is bad for your body? It's, it's okay. dangerous. Yeah, it's, a, it's a very good question. None of the vaccines today, except for one kind of influenza vaccine, contain thimerosal which is a kind of mercury. So it's not in today's vaccines. That was a question that came up in the uh, late 90s and it was decided not because there was any concerning evidence but because it was a preservative that was there to prevent other things from growing in the vaccine. It was there with a purpose but they down managed it and with the vaccine companies and the American Public Health Association and the Canadian government managed it out of all of the vaccines. So the only place there's any um, methylmercury is the thimerosal, which is in one of the influenza vaccines. You can always get a variant to that. So it's not in the vaccines. There seems to still be this lingering uh, group of people who are concerned that there's a connection between autism and vaccines. Can you explain why this should not be a concern? There have been good scientific studies done that absolutely securely refute the bad science that was published in the early 90s. Every time we bring a, a vaccine onto the market, there's very careful surveillance. We look for adverse events. We work with physicians, Public Health Ontario, the federal government, to ensure that vaccines are absolutely safe. If you haven't experienced the diseases and you read some of this, uh, I can understand where parents are coming from, and we need to spend time and energy and effort um, through folks like you and directly with them to help them feel safe and secure about this being the right decision for their kids. Do you have any benchmarks or illustrations of what life was like before these immunizations on particular diseases? Yes, yeah, so I do. I can do the numbers game. I can provide you with a graph that shows, for example, with measles, cases going along like this. You introduce the immunization and very, very quickly down to almost no cases. So there are graphs like that. But I can also tell you anecdotes. I used to be a pediatrician and I did see a number of these diseases that now we protect against and are no longer present meningitis from meningococcal vaccine. Haemophilus influenza was a terrible scourge in my practice in terms of epiglottitis, meningitis. You don't see that any longer at all. So I have lived through the era where I've seen a number of these diseases that we can now protect kids against. One particular child that's imprinted on my soul had haemophilus influenza and epiglottitis and three-year-old, perfectly normal, healthy kid. I'm called to emerge in the middle of the night and that child went on to die. And we didn't have the vaccine in those days, but I tell you. So this is personally affecting you when you hear families saying that they don't want to immunize their kids. I understand parents trying to do and make the best decisions they can and the best I can do is provide them with answers to their questions to hopefully have trust between us so at the end of the day they with their physician will make the right decision. So yeah, I mean you can't experience a, a three-year-old's death without, you know, imprinting it on your soul. Okay, so now you're armed with the information you need. Make the right decisions, okay?